10 laws of science in 5 minutes. Let's begin! In the year 1643, Evangelista Torricelli, an Italian physicist and student of Galileo Galilei, decided to poke a hole in a water tank. And because of that, a leakage was formed, which might or might not be in laminar flow. But he didn't know that at the time, because the Reynolds number would be defined in the next 200 years. So he poked another hole, and using his power of observation, he deduced that the speed of the water flowing out of the hole is proportional to the height of the hole in the tank. Thus, the Torricelli law was created. Suddenly, a wild Galileo appears. What the hell are you doing? To which Torricelli answered, Science, bitch! I need your help proving the existence of nothing. And Torricelli was like, GG easy, noob! So he filled the tube with liquid mercury and sealed the top end, then placed it in a plate full of mercury, opened the bottom end, and ta-da! The fluid level drops and creates a thing. This is nothing? Yeah, what should he call it? How about... Bitch! And so they called it vacuum, because it's Latin for absence of air. They also realized that they could use that thing to measure air pressure, since what was keeping the mercury in the tube was atmospheric pressure. So Torricelli called it barometer and took all the credit. Which is unfair, because he kind of stole the idea from a guy named Gaspar Roberti. But that's none of my business. The news of the invention of the barometer spread quickly, and a couple of BFFs back in Great Britain, by the names of Richard Townley and Henry Power, decided to use the barometer to measure atmospheric pressure at different heights, realizing during the process that atmospheric pressure changes with altitude. Wait, if pressure changes with altitude, does this mean volume is inversely proportional to pressure? Yes, so Power published a book about it, and thus was born the Boyle's Law. What? This is Robert Boyle. Boyle read a draft from Henry Power's book. Boyle decided to run a similar experience and publish the results first. Boyle is a jerk. Don't be like Boyle. Robert Boyle was a famous physicist and philosopher, which after reading about the experiment the BFFs had done, decided to replicate the results using a G-shaped tube filled with mercury. He realized that by changing the amount of mercury on the tube, it could decrease or increase the volume of air on the tip of said tube. Consequently, he made history by being the first to define a physical law in the form of an equation describing the dependence of two variable quantities. The experiment was a great way to prove the linear relationship between pressure and volume, and also not Boyle's idea, because the apparatus was actually built by his then assistant Robert Hooke, one of the founding fathers of the Royal Society, which was also a physicist, philosopher, architect, inventor of the microscope and known as the British Leonardo da Vinci that smoked weed and named the cell. After inventing the microscope, he developed an interest in fleas. Studying the insect up close, he realized that fleas' legs could store potential energy, just like a spring, which led him to conclude that the reaction force produced by a spring is proportional to the deformation of the spring, which basically means that the more you push on a spring, the harder it gets to push on it. Hooke's Law Robert Hooke had many theories. He made great progress on the theory of gravitation and motion, but he never bothered to find proof for them. And that's when the almighty god of science, Isaac, Isaac Newton, Newton, appeared out of nowhere and said, but can you do this? And published a book called Principia that mathematically proved Hooke's ideas and contained what we nowadays know as, as Newton's, Newton's laws, laws of motion. motion. First law of motion. A body at rest will continue at rest unless acted upon by a force. Second law of motion. The force acting on an object is equal to his mass times his acceleration. Third law of motion. When a body exerts a force on a second body, the second body simultaneously exerts a force equal in magnitude and opposite in direction on the first body. 100 years go by and a Frenchman by the name of Jacques Charles realized that the temperature of a gas is directly proportional to its volume. Charles Law! Then another Frenchman discovered that the pressure and temperature of a gas are also directly proportional to each other. And that's gay! Lussac's Law! Last but not least, we have Amadeo Avogadro, that understood that equal volumes of all gases, at the same temperature and pressure, have the same number of molecules. Avogadro's Law! Looking at these three laws, plus Boyle's Law that relates the pressure and volume of a gas, it became clear that there was some kind of love triangle between pressure, temperature and volume. By combining the power of the four gases laws, it was born one of the most important equations in thermodynamics. The, the ideal, ideal gas, gas law. law that established a mathematical link between pressure, temperature, and volume. Oh, and also the number of molecules in the gas. 
And these were 10 laws of science in 5 minutes. But wait, I was just told that we have time for a... Bonus, bonus law. law! To end this video in a high note, we will finish with Murphy's Law, which tells us that anything that can go wrong, will go wrong. So if you learned anything from this video, it's probably that you should not share your precious ideas with anyone, because humanity is come and they will steal them from you. Stay positive, the mitochondria is a powerhouse of the cell, and bye bye! In Texas, out!